Hello, welcome to Arduino Day 2023. I'm Ubi DeFeo and I'm here to talk to you about something that I'm pretty excited about. As you may know, Arduino has been on the forefront of teaching electronics and microcontroller to designers and makers for almost 20 years. It has changed many lives, including mine, and the fact that nowadays I work at Arduino and I bring my knowledge into the ecosystem makes me extremely proud of what I do. Over the past few years, you might have seen the presence of Python in the world of microcontrollers to become bigger and bigger. I've been keeping my eyes on it, and so has everyone at Arduino, for a few years. And I remember buying one of the first Pi boards from MicroPython in order to support the project way before I joined Arduino. As a teacher, of physical computing, I have over the years been teaching the classic Arduino using uh, C++ and all the ecosystem of libraries, of boards, platform support, and so on. And it served me extremely well to the point that when I joined the team, I knew uh, a thing or two about teaching Arduino to students, to mostly to, to interaction design students. And I thought it was extremely exciting to put your hands on the hardware, to, you know, manipulate bits and uh, write code that would end up on something tiny as this, and it would be useful to control motors, LEDs, sensors, and all, you know, the things that we've come to learn and love over the years as interaction designers and physical computing students and teachers. Over the past few years, I have been more and more curious towards Python as a language, and I've had the chance to write some small programs with it, you know, to analyze data, to make API calls and so on. And I found myself on this edge, you know, like, what do I want to do? Do I want to keep teaching traditional Arduino to designers in 2021, or do I want to move to something that is more easily approachable? As you may know, the high performance that we can reach thanks to Arduino and C++ is unparalleled. We have a massive amount of microcontrollers and prototyping boards which are supported by the ecosystem. And MicroPython has been uh, making its way into this world way more slowly than Arduino and C++ have over the years. But nonetheless, because I'm a curious individual, I wanted to bring it to my students. So I decided to make an experiment and I use one of my favorite boards. It's the Arduino Nano RP2040 Connect, which is based on the Raspberry Pi RP2040 microcontroller, and it runs MicroPython extremely well. Inside Arduino, we have been uh, uh, putting a lot of effort into the MicroPython world, specifically with OpenMV, which is a MicroPython version that has a lot of additional libraries and uh, abilities to do machine learning and uh, artificial intelligence. For beginners, this is not very easy to approach, you know? It's, it's kind of scary if you have never touched a microcontroller or if you have never written a line of code to be told, uh, use this board and uh, use something for machine vision or uh, artificial intelligence or machine learning. You want to start slowly. You want to, you know, take a stepping stone into this world. And uh, Python is an extremely uh, beautiful language. So inside Arduino, we decided to run a few experiments and we looked at what was available out there in matter of uh, code editors. Can we get something that is as simple as the original Arduino? What actually brought microcontrollers into the hands of everyone, pretty much. So we started looking at side projects, editors. We looked into the usual suspects. We looked at Thony, we looked at Mu, and we wanted something that was simpler. So we decided to take the road which we know best. 
Start from something simple and develop something that is approachable. And we came up with Arduino Lab for MicroPython. This is an extremely simple uh, editor which reminds us of the original Arduino editors, just with a fresher interface. We worked in collaboration with the original creator of this editor and we brought him inside Arduino. So this is internally developed and it's one of our labs project. If you check out labs.arduino.cc, you will find this editor and a couple more projects. We internally bring these labs to the open every now and then, as soon as we have something interesting, something that is cute and it's uh, kind of playful, but can be useful, we bring it to the public. So this is what happened with Arduino Lab for MicroPython. This editor is extremely simple. It allows you to connect to a board and every board which runs MicroPython is supported. We wanted to bring something which would be more approachable, more immediate. And MicroPython is a small Python interpreter, a subset of Python. So we can essentially just write code directly on the board. You interact with these boards connecting to a serial port which exposes the REPL, read, evaluate, print, loop. This interface is like a terminal. You can simply write things into it and the code that you write is executed on the board and evaluated and its result is returned into the terminal. Let's try this. One plus two. This code is running real time on the board. It's executed and it gives us something. So print hello Arduino. And this one is printed. And we can interact with the microcontroller. This is a demo setup, which I'm going to use in today's configuration. Let's look at it. It's super simple. We have a servo motor attached, an LED ring, an LED matrix, and a display. Let's blink an LED. If I want to blink an LED, I have access to the pins of the board as long as I import the object that can control the pins. So from a machine, which is a library that handles everything that is hardware, import pin. I can now define a variable named LED and I can say this LED is pin number six and it's an output pin. Now this code has been registered by my interpreter which means that I can just ask my MicroPython board what's LED? And it's going to tell me that LED is a pin and it's pin number six and its mode is out. So I can turn it on and off. I want you to take a look at this corner of the board. This is where the onboard LED, which we know from Arduino as LED built in, is connected to. So if I type LED dot on, this LED will turn on. LED dot off, this LED will turn off. And I have a facility for toggling the LED. So anytime I toggle, I can basically turn it on and off. So on if it was off and off if it was on. Now let's clear this terminal and do something else. I have turned on and off an LED, so the same way as we can uh, write a digital value to the pin, we can read its value if we're using a button. At this moment, I don't have any buttons connected, but I want to show you something. I want to show you how to use a library. I have some examples here. I can read from here, and I have this example for Grove LCD. So from machine, I import I2C. I2C is a communication protocol on, for microcontrollers and I import pin. 
And I import this library, which is on my board as some supporting code, and it's called I2C LCD. I define an I2C bus, and I say this I2C bus is my first bus, and it's connected here. I can define a variable called display, and this display is an RGB display because that's what it is connected. This LCD display allows me to have a backlight with a colored LED. I am going to just run this program and this program will write Arduino Day 2023 on the display, will move to the second line and will write MicroPython. And then it will set the color to a light blue slash teal. Run it. And that's where my code happens. The beauty of this is that this code is executed, but I can interact with the board because all of this code has created some variables in the microcontroller memory. If I type display, I can access this screen. So I can say display.clear and the display is clear and I can say display.write Hello, world. And I can set the background color of the display. So display.color. And I want to set some purple. So I'll do 200, 0, 200. I mean a typo. And now it's a light purple. And I can move to the second line. So first column. Second line, display dot write Arduino 2023. I can also turn off the, the background, so display dot color zero zero zero. Okay, this is how simple it is. Now I have other examples. I can use the LED ring. Most of us know these LED rings as NeoPixels, but NeoPixels is just a brand name. They're uh, addressable LEDs. If I run this code, I import the library and then I import the pin and I define ring as a NeoPixel object. I'm going to run this code. Nothing has happened, but I can essentially type some code to make this happen. And I'm going to type it here. I'm going to clear the terminal and I'm going to write ring. So the machine knows what ring is. You can say ring, the first pixel will be equal to red. 25500 is red. And then I can type ring.write. And the first LED will be red. Now I can write the second LED to be purple. Red, no green, and blue will give me purple. Ring.write will commit the changes and the second LED will be purple. Now let's look at the third thing that we have attached there, an LED matrix. I already wrote some code for this one. It's here. This code will basically import I square C because this is a matrix which works on I square C and it will create the object and then I will be able to plot the LEDs. So I'll turn them on or off and to update the matrix. So this LED will now turn on and be red. Looks yellow, but it's just a camera artifact. What I can do now, because all this code is in the memory, I can say matrix dot plot zero zero and then matrix dot draw. And the first LED, which is at position zero zero, will be turned on. I can do a lot more in MicroPython. I can leverage the sensors on board, the microphone, the uh, color sensor, gesture sensor. There are plenty of libraries developed for MicroPython. Of course, 
we continue to strive to make this world better for people who want to learn MicroPython. Arduino actively contributes to the MicroPython upstream. So on a daily basis, we issue PRs. We have an extremely good relationship with the MicroPython Foundation and we love MicroPython as a language. So we want to bring more and more libraries to you and we want to bring better editing capabilities into Arduino editors. We really look forward to bringing more of this to you, but for now, just play with it. Download it from labs.arduino.cc, pick your Arduino board to run your code on. You can run it on every board that supports MicroPython. So go on, get your own adventure and let us know what you do. Just talk about it and tell your friends. We really look forward to knowing what you're up to. Thank you so much and enjoy the rest of the Arduino day. Bye.